I f***ing love dead cells. Also, I am terrible at dead cells. I straight up do not have the goods to beat this game on anything but the beginner difficulty, but I keep coming back. How did I get stuck in this loop of struggle and death? And why does it hurt so good? Welcome to Random Game Reviews. I made a spreadsheet of every game in the PlayStation Store and use a random number generator to determine what games I play and review. This week, the RNG has chosen Dead Cells. In Dead Cells, you play as this goopy, gaseous entity known as the Beheaded that takes control of corpses in its quest to kill the king of this strange little island nation you find yourself trapped in. This kingdom has, uh, obviously had better years. The game is light on story, but you will piece together information about a plague known as the Malaise that has transformed nearly everyone into the horrifying, shambling monsters that now populate every single square inch of this place. I've determined that even though I suck real hard at it, Dead Cells is a game for me. But is it a game for you? Who is Dead Cells a game for? Dead Cells is a game for people who enjoy roguelikes. What's a roguelike, you ask? Well, in 1980, there was this game called Rogue that introduced the idea of permadeath, where if your character dies, you just start all the way back at the beginning of the game. Dead Cells carries on that tradition in that if you bork it, you have to start over and live with the consequences of your abject failure. Some people would actually classify this as a rogue light because you carry over permanent upgrades between runs, but I'm not going to get into all of that because I super don't care. Dead Cells is an excellent entry into the roguelike genre as it borrows every possible strength from Metroidvania platformers and builds into it a seemingly endless system of unlocks and progression that keeps me coming back again and again. Dead Cells is a game for people who really like killing monsters. There's only one real objective in Dead Cells and that's to kick as much monster butt as possible. And you'll be up to your eyeballs and butt, because this game is populated with a suffocating number of enemies. The variety of monsters is tremendous, and each one has a different set of tricks to murder you with, so learning by trial and error is key. You'll want to kill as many monsters as possible to get money to buy gear and upgrades, as well as special currency called cells, which you can use to permanently unlock new weapons, power-ups, and outfits in the rest area between levels. The combat is fast-paced and vicious, and if you're not quick enough or thoughtful in your actions, you'll get picked apart pretty quickly. In fact, some levels are so overwhelming that the best strategy is to run and roll away like a coward. But if you don't want to just flee for your life, you have to get buff enough to optimize your monster murder. Your character has three main stats, brutality, tactics, and survival. Brutality is all about quickly overwhelming monsters with brute force. Tactics is a more measured sit back and attack from a distance style, and survival focuses on using shields to let monsters come to you so you can parry their attacks and stun them. You'll pick up scrolls throughout your run to upgrade these stats, and will have to choose weapons that support the stat you've chosen to focus on. The gameplay overall is pretty straightforward, attacking, jumping, rolling. But the combat and platforming are so well done that when I inevitably die, I'm excited to pick right back up at the first level and try again. But when you've died a bajillion times, does the game start to feel repetitive? Nah, because Dead Cells is a game for people who like random. You know who likes random? Me. I do. I've kind of made it my whole thing, and there is a lot of RNG at play in this game. Each level has a typical point A to point B structure, but will never look exactly the same because each level is procedurally generated, inserting random segments to support a few consistent set pieces. And you can zoop around the level using portals. Fun! Dead Cells also has a metric butt-ton of weapons you can use. You have slots for two main weapons like shanks, bows, and shields, and two slots for special weapons like grenades, turrets, or pets. The weapons made available to you are also randomized, and each one handles completely differently. Every weapon has its own gimmick and playstyle, and how you build your loadout completely changes the way you have to strategize and fight enemies. And to further help switch things up, the game has multiple different paths you can take so that you're not just playing the same levels over and over again. Again. The fact that no two playthroughs were the same is my favorite thing about Dead Cells. My second favorite thing is how freaking good it looks. Dead Cells is a game for people who appreciate things that look freaking good. Dead Cells is gorgeous, which is actually kind of a weird thing to say when you get a look at some of the horrifying stuff the artist so beautifully rendered. Like this. Or this. Or this. Ooh. 
This is bad. Everything in this game looks gooey and wet and awesome. The dark fantasy setting is alluring and repulsive in equal measure. Dead Cells goes with retro-inspired pixel graphics and is the best version of that art style I've ever seen. The art is simply amazing, from the backgrounds to the character designs. The sheer variety of environments and enemies that all feel distinct and thoughtfully crafted is staggering. The animations are incredibly fluid, and even the weapon design is so precise that each one of the over 100 instruments of mayhem are immediately visually recognizable. Dead Cells is a game for people who like really hard games. This game is hard as f for real. Dead Cells will tear your ass off and beat you to death with it. I died so much. So much. It doesn't take many hits from enemies to get killed, so two mistakes in quick succession can cost you an entire run. And as frustrating as that could be, it's honestly part of what makes the game great. You don't know what an enemy is going to do when you meet it for the first time. You'll think you're safe and a monster will just belly flop onto you from across the stage. But when you come back, you'll know how to handle yourself. Unless you're me. Now, maybe people will say I need to get good, but I think I'm about as good as I can get. I did eventually finish a run. I was randomly assigned starting weapons I thought I would hate, but ended up totally owning fools with them. The reward for beating the game? Play it again, but harder. Beating the game earns you boss cells that let you up the difficulty and the reward. There are five layers of difficulty beyond the starting difficulty, but I'm just not good enough yet to get any further. Though beating the game once gives you the ability to detach your head from your body and eat people from afar. So that's nice. The developer is introducing a new easier mode for accessibility purposes, which will also hopefully open the door for people who want to experience dead cells, but don't want to deal with the pain that goes with it. Me? I like the pain. Beating a game that is designed to destroy me comes with such a sense of accomplishment. Plus, there are so many fun weapons and items to unlock, I haven't even scratched the surface of what the game has to offer. I respect how perfectly polished the game is, and how the devs keep refining it and adding more content via free updates. There are also three DLC packs, and I bought all of them. That's how into it I am. And Dead Cells perfectly fits my busy lifestyle, since completing a run only takes an hour. And honestly, almost all of my runs are shorter than that. It's time to answer the question, would I play this game if I were not destined to do so? For Dead Cells, the answer is hell yes. The developer nailed literally everything about this game. This is what a perfect game looks like. I'm not saying it's the best game ever made, or even my favorite game, but the developers knew what they were trying to accomplish and they executed it flawlessly. There's not a single thing out of place. If literally anything about this game piqued your interest, I recommend giving it a try. This game is the best value for your money of anything I've reviewed thus far. That does it for this episode. If you made it this far, it would be lovely if you hit the like button and leave a comment letting me know on a scale of 1 to 10 how much does kicking monster butt mean to you as an individual. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Random Game Reviews. Special thanks to my supporters on Patreon. In exciting channel news, Random Game Reviews just hit 1,000 subscribers. I suppose I'll let a random number generator tell me how I should celebrate. Time to build another spreadsheet.